Rosa's got a little anxious to leaf out this spring because of some of the mild days that we had. And I'm sure many of you are guilty of being a little bit too anxious in pruning those roses as well. And really, the middle to the end, and really more to the end of March, or even the first of April, is the best time to prune your roses. Because if you prune them back, you'll actually stimulate more growth that can be more cold susceptible. So you want to be sure and not get in too big of a hurry. Now, if you'll remember a few weeks ago, we planted a couple of new rose plants on the show. And we had a few new cane breaks from those plants, but they've gotten knit back a little bit because of the cold temperature. And we've gotten a little bit of damage. And so we'll just go in and, and prune those back a little bit. And we'll just have a few more weeks of patience and we should be getting some break. And remember that the wax around them is going to slow them down a little bit too. Now we didn't really have that cold of a winter, but we really got a lot of damage on our roses here. This is one of the plants that we put in last spring. And I want you to notice that we actually got winter kill back to the graft. And what that means is we've really lost our plants. The graft is right along in here, and we're getting a little bit of sucker growth, but that's coming out below the graft. So that plant will actually be a wild rose or whatever they've grafted it onto, and it won't be the variety that we intended for it to be. So we have no idea what color the flowers will be or what they'll even look like. If you would have tried to uh, cover those up with soil like we talked about in the fall, which we didn't do because we weren't sure how the winter would be. If we would have covered the plant with soil up to this point, we could have gotten a, gotten a little bit more protection from the cold winter. So again, we've lost about six of our rose plants just because of improper care. And really the nutrition and the care that we gave them last year was really lacking too. So they went into the winter time starved with a lot of disease problems. And that has a lot to do with the success of how you pull them through the winter. But again, now is the time to prune them and uh, inspect your roses and see where those suckers are coming out and see if you've gotten any damage. But here's one variety pleasure that we put in. And it really looks good for us. We've got a lot of growth on it. Again, a lot of leaves came out early this year. This is a Floribunda rose, and it's going to get pretty high as far as the height of the growth that we get. So we'll want to come in, and really there are several reasons that you prune roses. One is to prune and get out any dead, diseased wood. The second reason would be to open it up for air circulation. And the third point would be trying to get as many flowers and flower size as we possibly can. Now again, we'll come in and we'll try to lower the height of this one a little bit, but the first thing that we're going to do is look in the center and see where we can prune out some of the areas to try to get a little bit of growth um, in the center and open it up some. And the first thing I've done is just cut out quite a bit of the center, and again, it's pretty much dead, and uh, it opens it up quite a bit for air circulation. And you can look in really accomplish quite a bit by doing that. The other thing is when you're pruning on the outside, make sure that you look at the direction the leaves or the buds are growing. If we want to continue to open it up and we make a pruning cut right there, we've actually caused it to grow back into the center. So we'll go down a little bit lower and find one that's growing out and that's where we'll make that cut. Also, you want to make the pruning cut at an angle right above that leaf bud or leaf axle and that way the water won't stand on it and you won't get any rotting. And then again you see we've got some winter damage here. So there are a lot of those things that we can prune out. But again we're going to lower this one back quite a bit. And this is kind of what we're talking about when we're going to cut it back so we can keep it under control and not let it get away from us. As we do that, we'll get a lot of sucker growth under here as well. Now on this side, we've got our Maidlin roses, and they all made it through the winter quite fine. We've got three different ones here in front. We have a lot of vining growth on these. These are more of a shrub type rose. And the one in the center, we've already pruned up to give you an idea how we want to keep it under control. 
The one over here, if you'll notice, we've got a lot of long vining branches and we want to cut those back because they'll put a lot of new growth on during the summer. And we've really cut quite a bit off of this one. And again, we just want to watch the angle where that leaf is growing so we don't cause it to grow in a path or back into the plant where it will be in the way or obstruct the view. The last thing I want to show you is while you're pruning your roses, remember that they really are high maintenance. And you'll have to do some summer pruning as well to keep the growth from competing and get more flowers and cut out those flowers as they're growing and, and dying. But occasionally you'll get some sucker growth from some of your cuttings. And when you do that, you can take those and try to start new plants. And what we've done here is we're using Jiffy 7s, and this is what they come in when you purchase them at the store. They're just a little pellet, and they're compressed with peat moss, and then once you soak them in water, you can see how they'll swell up and the size variation there. After you take the cutting of rows, and here we've got one that has a sucker that's got three or four different leaflets, you can put some rooting hormone on it. If you have it, it might help out the rooting, but you just want to place that down in the center of the pellet and kind of push it together where it will come in contact with the leaflet. And then you can do one of two things. We've still got a little bit of room left in our coal frame, so we're just going to bury those down in the sand, and then we'll have the humidity from the coal frame. Now, if you don't have a coal frame, just find an empty jar in your house and then just put that over the top and you can place that cutting down in sand even to help hold the moisture and just put the lid on it. And once you start getting new growth, then it'll be time to transplant it into a container into your garden. So these are some things that you can do with your roses this time of year. Remember, it's time to prune them. We'll keep you in touch as the summer goes on on how you should be doing some of the summer pruning as well. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. You can also find more recent videos on our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.